Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. When it comes to training in the gun world, a lot of people have trepidation about that, going to do training. And I understand it. You don't, a lot of times, if you've never been to that particular class or you've never done a class, you're nervous about it, etc. What would you say to people who have that feeling? And then how would you describe how you run the school? Well, first I'd tell them I've been there. Uh, you know, when I when I learned how to shoot guns, it wasn't in the most pleasant environment on the planet. You know, it was uh, people yelling at you and screaming at you and, um, you know, in, in the military side of the house. And then in law enforcement, it was kind of the same way. In law enforcement, a lot of times, not all the time, but a lot of times in law enforcement, they'll take the guys that may not be the best street guys and then they'll put them in the firearms instruction part. So it's like, <laughs> why, why job. is that? <laughs> they weren't good at the job and they're really not good shooters. So it's like, you kind of, you kind of get it on both ends. So, I mean, right, but, but right. yeah, I understand what it's like to answer your first part is like, mm-hmm. you know, do I, you know, a lot of people do approach with trepidation. I mean, geez, just look at some of the characters out there. You know, I'm not going to mention any specific names, but I mean, all you have to do is, is watch YouTube videos on some of the stuff that's out there. I mean, yeah, I, I could understand that if I was just a, a normal person or even if I was a, you know, a person who had, you know, served or did any of that stuff. I mean, I could see a lot of that stuff and women, especially, you know, uh, we've got a lot of women in class and um, I understand how that stuff is. But, you know, how we approach things here is, is adult learning. So, you know, y- there's specific things you have to do for adult learning. And so as a you know professional educator, you know, you learn that. I figure if I can keep a class of high school students entertain for an hour and a half at a time. Adults are pretty easy. Yeah, well, yeah, it should be. <laughs> what would be, be your advice to someone out there who's like, okay, I want to do this? How do you think they should pick the, you know, training center, the, the school, the, you know, whatever it is that they go to? How should they pick that? How should they, you know, look around? I would look at the instructor's background. Like, does their experience, is it relevant to yours? I mean, you could have guys out there that did really cool stuff in the military, but... How applicable is that to you as a family man or a family woman? You know, how applicable is it? And the other thing I would look at is is more like comprehensive. Like, is it just about shooting or is it about developing yourself like as a holistic aspect of your life, how you live your life? Are they going to help you with target discrimination? Are they going to help you uh, with the basic things that you need to do all the time? And I would look at, uh, you know, basically, you know, what I would what I'd really, really look at is what do you want to accomplish as a person? Do you just want to learn how to shoot good? Because there's a lot of places out there that you can shoot a bunch of rounds and, and you can get entertained. And um, my philosophy on training is width is a uh, depth over width. So when I talk about that, it's like there's a lot of schools out there that will teach you a lot of stuff over two, three, four, five days. They'll teach you a lot of stuff, a lot of different drills, a lot of round count, making a lot of brass. Um, you know, you'll do a lot of different drills. That's wide. And then depth is that you're going to hit the core fundamentals, the core modules. You're going to hit those again and again and again. And you're not going to we're not going to do a wide set of drills. But what we're going to do is the core consistent, mechanically sound fundamental drills where you're going to get good repetitions on the gun because that's what saves lives. It's fundamentals that wins gunfights. And it's always been that way. It'll always be that way. And, you know, so we go deep uh, rather than wide in our training. And that's what I would look for if I was beginning as a shooter. I would. I would look for depth over width and I would look on education over entertainment and I would look at uh, in the big picture, I would really look on the emphasis on the basics and I would look at somebody who is there to help you develop as a shooter and who is there not for the money, not for eat, not for relevancy, uh, who's there because they want to be there rather than they have to be there. Brian Quick says, what's the typical round count in Reed's pistol class? Typical round count. 300 Three hundred. Okay. Actually, you, you'll, well, you'll you'll shoot less of that. We tell people to bring three hundred, but you'll mm-hmm. shoot a lot less. Yeah. Um, and so, what and what classes do you have going on now? So, I man, the last time I was out there, what was it like four years? I know the last time I talked to you was two years ago. I've been there yeah, at least well, twice. Yeah, we do uh, we do pistol and rifle classes, and we've got a lot of different ones. You know, we we've got a, uh, for pistol classes. You know, we do. Uh, Austere conditions, which is a really lot of unusual drills that you normally wouldn't do, be able to do on a normal range, but we control and structure the training properly so that uh, there's not uh, danger or anything like that. But it is unique. Um, you know, we do 
active shooter. So that's uh, definitely, you know, based on room clearing and hallway clearing, target discrimination, moving innocent bystanders out of the way, uh, breaking angles inside structures. We uh, have some force on force in that class, which is very valuable training. And then we also do a home defense class, which is uh, mm -hmm. clearing your house, uh, doing, learning how to do that by yourself. And we also do that, a lot of that stuff in low light for home defense. So a lot of people really like that class. And in terms of rifle, we obviously do our rifle one. We do mid range where we have people go out to pass 600 yards with the, with the carbine, with iron sights or red dot or whatever they normally use on their rifle. Um, we also do neighborhood defense, which is building cleanings, uh, clearings in teams. And we do some vehicle work in that class. And we do fire team tactics, which is team-based uh, small unit movement. And we also do a home defense rifle class as well. So we've got quite a bit of offerings out there. Yeah, absolutely. And once again, like I said, if you go to Valor Ridge, you will be able to, if you go to the website, you'll be able to get answers uh, to all of that stuff. Brian Quick was asking about the force on force. I think um, I think you answered that. Do you want to give a shout out to some of the other guys? I know you don't do this alone. You've got other guys working with you. Yeah, uh, yeah. I got a couple guys that have been there for, for a very long time. And some people, you know, when they can make it. But, uh, mm -hmm. you know, my buddy JJ, I'm, um, you know, he's he's a. Uh, He's an old school retired Illinois State Trooper. He's been out here since the very first class, and yeah, he's been coming back ever since. So JJ's been helping me out a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, Clay, you know, he uh, he just had a, a kid, so now he's got two kids, and he's recovering from a uh, back injury that he sustained in the line of duty. He's a police officer in Southern Illinois, so he sustained a pretty bad injury, but he's recovering. He'll be back off the shelf here, hopefully by the end of the year. Okay. Um, you know, so yeah, those guys have been here from the very beginning, and they've they've really helped me out a lot. Yeah, and it's a it's a nice place for anyone who hasn't gone up there. It's a nice uh, part of uh, Tennessee. What are you in the northeastern part of Tennessee? Yeah, I'm looking at yeah. three states right now. My porch is right. I'm on my porch. I'm looking out <laughs> that way right over there, and uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm looking out. I'm looking at Tennessee, Virginia, and Kentucky. Uh, mm -hmm. Sitting on my back porch, I can actually see all three of those states from right here. Make sure to check out hamstrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.